The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. Please enjoy the presentations. Our next speaker is Adham L. Manufi. He's a graduate student working on his master's at the University of Waterloo in Waterloo, Ontario. Thank you for the introduction. Good afternoon. Uh, I'll be presenting today the uh, effects of environmental exposure on the creep behavior of adhesive anchors. Uh, first, I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, Professor Kal Sudki from University of Waterloo and Dr. Ahmed Said from King Saud University and Hannah Shal from Ministry of Transportation of Ontario. So uh, I'm going to do a little bit of introduction, probably not needed at this point after previous speakers. Basically, anchoring systems uh, that I'll be talking about today are post-installed anchors, adhesive anchors. So uh, I'm just going to talk about uh, how, how do they achieve the, uh, their bond. So it's basically between the, the bond between the anchor adhesive and uh, concrete along the embedment depth. Uh, adhesive anchors are usually threaded rods or uh, deformed uh, steel bars. Different products uh, are used based uh, can be epoxy-based or uh, polyester-based or vinyl ester-based. I'm just going to do a little bit of a literature review regarding the subject that I'm talking about. Tu and Kruger in 1996 reported that water is a harmful factor for epoxy adhesives and noticed severe bond strength uh, deterioration of joints subjected to water. Uh, also, Higgins and Klinger in 1999 tested the effect of uh, UV exposure on, and uh, acid rain wetting and drying on the bond strength. No significant impact on the tensile behavior of anchor was the, noticed. Cook and Cons in uh, 01 experimentally investigated different, uh, 20 different types of adhesives under different uh, service conditions and installation conditions. Although they found some general trends uh, for products with similarities in their chemi chemical formulation, still within those chemical grouping, some variation did occur, uh, which make it unreliable to make any predictions based on uh, chemical formulation. Uh, Milan in 06 uh, evaluated the creep performance of epoxy adhesives systems with the epoxy coated steel rebars at uh, elevated temperatures on three types of adhesives and two out of uh, the three products uh, failed to satisfy the ISBO AC058 uh, uh, requirements. And of course, uh, the Boston incident in uh, 06 where uh, the report by the National Transportation Safety Board uh, determined that the probable cause of the collapse was the epoxy uh, used as being poor uh, creep resistance and the infamous pictures of the crash site. So uh, just to sum up, I think everyone agrees that we need a lot of research in, in the area and limited research is available on the long-term performance of adhesive anchors, uh, specifically uh, when introduced uh, to different environmental exposures. Prompted by the US experience, uh, we at University of Waterloo in collaboration with the Ministry of uh, Transportation of Ontario pursued this uh, investigation to do this research on the long-term creep behavior of adhesive anchors under sustained tensile load. Uh, the main objective of the research that I'm about to be presenting is that to evaluate the performance of such adhesives, epoxy and acrylic based, in combination with environmental exposures that we'll be talking about in just a bit. So uh, this table here just shows, uh, summarizes the research program or the experimental program that we we took. So it's basically divided into four phases. Uh, phase one was the static pullout testing under room temperature just to develop a baseline. Phase two uh, is a long uh, sustained load uh, creep testing under room temperature. Uh, phase three was uh, creep testing under moisture exposure and phase four was creep testing under freestyle cycling. We basically used three types of commonly used uh, adhesives and the load levels for all the creep, uh, creep testing was uh, 40% of the anchor yield strength was about 32 kilonewtons. So a uh, typical specimen, uh, like you see here, is a cylindrical concrete block, 12 inches in diameter, 8 inches in height. All anchors uh, were 15 uh, M deformed steel bars embedded to a depth of 8 bar diameter, or 5 inches, or approximately 125 millimeters. The three types that we used, type A would be a fast setting, two component methacrylate base. Uh, the second type, which is type B, is a fast-setting two-part epoxy adhesive, and type C would be standard-set uh, two-part epoxy adhesives. 
Uh, during installation of the anchors, we actually got a uh, representative from each manufacturer to witness the installation of the anchor just to avoid any of the so-called uh, gross errors in installation. For the creed testing setups, we actually had to adopt two setups uh, just for logistics. So for the ambient temperature and moisture exposure, what we did is we used the, we fabricated steel frames that uh, used a series of lever arms to magnify uh, a given dead load to the required tensile uh, load on an anchor, like you see here. So basically, a dead load magnified through two lever arms, and you get the required uh, tensile load on an anchor with the magnification factors 1 to 115, approximately. Uh, all the, f the steel frames were pre-calibrated prior to testing uh, to know exactly what load we need to get that tensile load that we want. Uh, the second testing uh, setup, which was for the freestyle, and like I said before, it, it had to be put into an environmental chamber for the freestyle uh, our cycling, so it has to be less in space. So we actually use the setup that's commonly used, which uh, uses compression coil springs with a rod assembly, a compression coil spring that we use at a capacity of 40 kilonewtons at 1.5 inches of compression displacement, uh, like shown in the picture. And each uh, setup had a, a load cell to monitor that load during the period of the testing. For our static pullout testing, we did the confined, confined pullout testing. Testing was done in a four-post uh, testing frame with an MTS uh, actuator with a 500 kilonewton capacity and 20 inches of stroke. We did apply a thin layer of hydrostone between the, uh, the steel plate that you see at the bottom here for the confinement, uh, just to ensure full contact between the surface of the specimen and the steel plate and a uniform distribution of the load on the specimen. So that's a typical specimen just prior to testing. I'm going to show a little bit of the, the results that we got during the testing. So for, I'm going to start off with the static pullout tests. Uh, all three, three adhesives behave similar, in a similar manner up to yielding of the anchor. Uh, generally speaking, the specimens with type B and C, which are the epoxy-based adhesives, exhibit a stronger ultimate capacity, forcing the anchor to fail by rupture. Uh, rather, uh, specimens with type A which is acrylic base failed by bond. Uh, this table summarizes the uh, static test results that we got. So as you can see, for type A, the ultimate load was about 121 kilonewtons versus for type B and C, the epoxy-based ones, uh, about 132 to 133 kilonewtons. And type A all fall, failed by bond, uh, while types B and C failed by uh, anchor rupture. For the, our creep test results, like I said, the sustained load level that we used was 40% of the ankle year strength. Three test, uh, tests lasted for a minimum period of 90 days. The three exposure conditions that we used, the ambient temperature moisture exposure, which was achieved by ponding, freestyle cycles uh, with the presence of moisture because of ponding as well. The freeze and south cycles were cycled per 24 hours, 16 hours of freezing at negative 20 Celsius, and eight hours of thawing at uh, plus 20 Celsius. The test results for specimens with type A adhesive, so uh, again, that's the uh, fast-setting acrylic-based adhesive. Uh, under ambient temperature, response, oh, we got consistent response, response with a decreasing rate of creep, creep displacement over time, while when exposed to moisture and freestyle, we, we see an increase in creep displacement and a bit of uh, inconsistency as well. So here, when you take a look at, the, at those graph, that's displacement versus time uh, curves for specimens with the type A adhesives. So the, the one on the top left would be the under temperature temperature, the one below it would be freestyle cycles, and the top right would be moisture exposure. So you can see the effect when moisture is introduced, you get significant increase in the creep displacement over time, and a bit of inconsistency with that product in specific. And uh, again, with the moisture uh, freestyle ex uh, exposure, again, uh, increase in creep displacement but not as much as uh, inconsistent as the moisture exposure. With the bar chart on the top right, it actually, you can actually visualize the impact of the different exposures that we get. So at ambient, uh, fairly low, then a significant increase when uh, uh, moisture and freestyle are introduced. For specimens with the type B adhesives, so that would be the fast, uh, fast set epoxy-based adhesives. Again, similar. Uh, effect when moisture is exp exposed higher uh, overall average for a creep displacement with an uh, increasing rate with time. Widely variable response again with the three specimens. Uh, freeze cycles uh, slightly increase the creep displacement. So again, 
the pre uh, displacement versus uh, time curves for that type of adhesives. Uh, again, you see with the moisture exposure, uh, similar to before, uh, inconsistencies and uh, significant increase in, cre in uh, creep displacement. So for type C, which is the standard set, epoxy-based, we've seen insignificant creep displacement at, uh, at room temperature. When moisture is intru introduced, slightly increased. When freestyle is introduced, again, slight increase in creep displacement, but at this time we got some inconsistencies. So like I said, in ambient temperature, almost no creep is uh, recorded over a period of 100 days. Uh, moisture slightly increased, and with uh, freestyle, inconsistencies as, uh, are noticed. And again, the bar charts uh, can visualize the effect of the moisture, the environmental exposures. Uh, this figure here is just uh, basically comparing the average of each uh, adhesive type over a certain exposure. So the first one would be ambient temperature. The one on the left is type A, then type B, then type C. And you can see the effects of the moisture when you compare the three specimens. To conclude, all adhesive type had lower uh, creep displacement under ambient temperature compared to moisture exposure and freestyle exposure. Uh, types A and B, which are the uh, fast setting ones, showed a significant increase in creep displacement when exposed to moisture. Freestyle cycles did not have much of an effect on type B, slightly affected type C, but significant increase for type A. Uh, overall, type C, which is the standard set epoxy based adhesive, appears to be superior in terms of uh, creep behavior over the fast setting ones uh, type A and B. Types B and, uh, and C, the epoxy-based one, again, in terms of uh, aesthetic pull-out capacities, uh, they exhibit a higher capacity compared to the acrylic-based one, type A. Further uh, extrapolation and analysis of the dust data is required to assess the effect of such conditions on the uh, anchoring system. Additional testing on a wider range of adhesives should be done to incorporate these environmental impacts in a design model. Finally, I would like to uh, acknowledge the Ministry of Transportation of Ontario for uh, funding this research, and uh, thank you. I got a quick question. Uh, you indicated that those environmental effects had the result on the creep performance. Do you have any information whether this specific products you were using did already have a moisture influence on the short-term behavior? And if yes, to which extent? To the same extent, larger or smaller extent? Well, basically, all three products, their manufacturers uh, state in their product sheets that they're moisture resistant. So in terms of long-term. So they shouldn't have an effect. But uh, uh, according to our test results, they do. The uh, environmental test, the freeze-thaw, and the uh, moisture tests, were the installations done in accordance with AC-308, uh, not the loading, but the actual installation, or, yes. or, or, or was it done under a different criteria? Are you, are you asking about the anchor installation itself, or the... Yeah, the... so um, uh, moisture installation would be the well, saturated concrete installation test within AC-308, or... The, the moisture was introduced post-installation of the anchor. Yeah, so it's, we're, not, we're, not, we're not testing the whole condition. Um, I think you're asking, but... Uh, so the freeze-thaw test and the moisture test were both installed in a dry condition, and then that was an environmental yeah. uh, exposed anchors after they were cured and loaded. Exactly. Thanks. You're welcome. You did make a comment that the, uh, that the normal epoxy, you didn't see much improve, much difference between moisture and, and uh, dry, but when I looked up there, it looked like it was about a 40% difference, which was about the same as what you had on the other two. So what I saw was that you probably did not have that anchor loaded for, loaded enough because you had steel failure instead of testing the epoxy. So you never really put a significant load to test the epoxy on those anchors for their creep. You would have seen a much greater creep uh, difference between them had had you increased that load. The, but, the level uh, of but it looked like there was load? about a 40% difference between between the dry and the and the moisture, and that looked like it was about the same. Is that what you saw in all three anchors, about 40%? For the, uh, are you talking about the last types of the standard set epoxy type or the fast setting? The uh, standard set epoxy. The standard set epoxy, so. Yeah, you had about 2.5 and 1.5 when you looked from uh, dry to, to moisture. Yeah, yeah. So it's about a 40% increase, and I think that's what we saw in all three of those. We've seen bigger increases with the with the other two types, slightly higher. Yeah, almost, almost double there. Almost, they, they, they all look like they're like 40, 50 percent increases. So I, I would say that you're seeing about the same effect on all of them. In terms of uh, 
magnification, uh, maybe of a sin in term an, an overall creep displacement, I would say no. I mean, in terms of magnification, you, you could be right between 40 to 50 percent. Your creep displacement will increase linearly with your with your load. So if you were to increase the load, you would have an increased lead. Displacement as well, and so the difference would be more obvious. Okay, thank you. <laughs>